Did you know in the Arduino IDE that you can organize your code using different tabs? In this lesson, you're going to learn how to add these tabs, how they get organized in the Arduino sketch folder, and how to use them in order to better organize your code. Stay tuned. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, it really helps us bring you the best content. It doesn't cost you anything but a click, and it allows us to keep doing this. All right, so here we are in the Arduino IDE. I've got a program open, it's called Tabitha, and I have got a sketch written out. So let me just familiarize you with this sketch so you kind of get an idea of what's going on. So I've got some NeoPixels. Those are individually addressable LEDs. It's like an individually addressable LED strip. Okay, you've probably seen them around, they're really cool looking. And I'm using this library called Fast LED to control them. And I've got some variables here that, you know, set up the number of pins and which data pin I'm using and, and an array to store the different LEDs that I'm in. Okay. And then I have some functions that do some different things. So one is setting them all the LEDs red, then one sets them all blue, one sets them all green, but it uses this little fade all function in here that kind of makes it interesting. And I also have that function right here, fade all, right? So I've got four functions and then below that I have my setup and my loop. So in setup, you know, just start in serial communication, and then I'm just initializing some stuff for that fast LED library. Nothing crazy going on in setup. And then loop, all I'm doing is I'm calling these three functions, set red, set blue, and set green. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna, you know, there's a lot kind of, I don't know, going on in here. Maybe I wanna like reduce the clutter in here. And let's say I wanna put each one of these functions in its own file, in its own tab. All right, so all of the files that you create in Arduino are gonna live in the Arduino sketchbook folder. And you can figure out where your sketchbook folder is by going to, if you're on a Mac, you'd go to Arduino preferences, or if you're on a PC, I think it's file preferences. And the first thing they show is your sketchbook location. So the location of my sketchbook folder is under my name, my documents, and then in a folder Arduino. And then I have saved Tabitha somewhere inside this folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. All right, so here is the folder Tabitha. And you'll notice I've got a .eno file inside here. Okay, so Tabitha is the name of the folder and Tabitha.eno is this file right here. So the way Arduino saves your sketches is it creates a folder with the same name as the .eno file in here. That's like how the folder structure works. That's how the program stores and organizes the code. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna add a tab up here and I am gonna put this function set red inside of this tab. So all I do is I come up over here, there's this little drop down, and I'm gonna say new tab and then come down here is where I can name it. So I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna call it set red. Doesn't matter what you name it. I could call it, you know, yo mama if I wanted to, but I'm gonna call it set red because to me that's uh, instructive of what it's gonna do. I hit okay and you'll notice a new tab pops up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this function, set red, I'm gonna cut it out of there, and I'm gonna paste it in here. All right, so I've cut it out, I've pasted it, I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna verify it. And compiling works, and now I'm just gonna upload it, and you know what, the uh, NeoPixel strip is doing the exact same thing as it was doing before. Okay, so cool, so I have added this function right here in its own tab, so now, hey, this is a little less congested, a little less in here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that file structure. So now notice what happens here. So here's that enclosing folder, Tabitha. We still have Tabitha.eno, that's this tab right here. But now we have a new .eno file, setred.eno. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take all of these functions right here and I'm gonna put them in their own tabs Tell me what you think is going to happen over here, okay? Make a guess while I do this. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. For $0, you can get a 1 to 4 layer PCB. That's right, $0 for a PCB prototype for the first order. 
For a limited time, you can get $1,050 in coupons during their spring sale. That's $1,050 worth of coupons for their spring sale. You can upload a Gerber file, and when you do that, it will fill in all this information for you, and that also allows you to use the Gerber viewer. That's $0 for a PCB prototype. You can use the link below to register and get that $1,050 in coupons during their spring sale. All right, check this out. So now I've got Tabitha, I've got Fade All, Set Blue, Set Green, Set Red. I've uploaded it. Everything is working just as it was before. Now let's take a look, see what happens. Is this what you thought was going to happen? I bet it is. So now all we do, all we have here is multiple .eno files in one enclosing folder named Tabitha. So take a look at the tabs. Can you figure out how these are organized? Because I think the first one I made was set red, but now it's at the very end. But it looks like these are alphabetically organized up top with the first sketch, like the first one that gets open, always stays over at the left. So this one always is gonna be at the far left, but the rest of them are gonna be based on their alphabetical order in naming, in the name of that file. So F is before S, and then B is before G, and G is before R. But let's test it. Let's go ahead, let's make a new tab. We're gonna call it uh, Alpha. Where does it go? See, it pops right over in front of all of those. And then if uh, let's make a new tab, let's call it Zulu and it ends up at the end. All right. So I think, you know, that sounds about right. Okay. I'll de delete those. See, that's easy to delete these two. You just delete it. And Hey, if I want to rename these, all I got to do is click over here. I can rename it. So new name for file. I can call it fade all of these. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, how does this actually work though? What's like, what actually happens in the background that, that sets this up? Well, let's check out this awesome page on the internet on GitHub where Arduino talks about their sketch build process. So this is how the sketch actually gets put together. And if we come down here in pre-processing, it tells us some interesting things. First, it says all Eno and .pde files in the sketch folder. So what is the sketch folder? Well, that is, if we come back here, that's this right here. That is that enclosing folder. That's our sketch folder. Okay, so all Eno and .pde files in the sketch folder shown in the Arduino IDE is tabs with no extension are concatenated together. So they take the files like they were cats and they put one after another, starting with the file that matches the folder name, followed by the others in alphabetical order. So this sketch is going to have some processing done to it that's going to allow it to get loaded onto the Arduino hardware. And part of that processing, they're telling us, is that they're going to concatenate these files. So here's Tabitha. They say we're going to start with the Eno file that matches the including folder name. Then in alphabetical order, they're going to take these right here. So it's literally going to go and it's going to take this file, this, these lines of code, and it's going to paste them right there, plop. And it's going to have this one file now, and it's going to do those with all of all of these files. So it's going to condense them into one file. All right. That's pretty interesting. What else does it do? Anything else that we might be interested in? Okay. It does. What it says is prototypes are generated for all function definitions in dot Eno dot PDE files that don't already have prototypes. Okay. So, what is a function prototype? Well, a function prototype is just this first part of the function, like the function signature, right? And what it's going to do is stick it right in here. It's going to look like this. And this tells the compiler, hey, this is this fade all function. These are the parameters it takes. This is what it's going to return. And it might be referenced somewhere inside this sketch. So this is this function prototype. I know a little bit of hand waving there, but I mean, that's, that's essentially what it does. But what this build process is telling us is that those prototypes are generated for all functions in the Eno and PDE files that don't already have prototypes. So it's going to take this code, it's going to concatenate it, then it's going to look for functions, you know, like fade all, and then it's going to make a prototype for these, and it's going to stick it right up here. Okay, so why, why are we talking about that? Well, here's why. This next sentence, in some rare cases, Prototype generation may fail for some functions. 
to work around this, you can provide your own prototype for these functions. Now, like in some rare cases, we don't know what those cases are necessarily. I'm sure there's probably a way to figure out what these cases are. I personally don't know what the rare cases are, but I do know that I have seen it enough that it can be frustrating. So some cheap insurance for us is simply to write the prototypes ourselves, And then we can be sure that there aren't gonna be any errors when the compilation happens. So I'm just gonna make prototypes for all of these functions. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can use these different tabs. Now, you know, I'm not saying that you make a tab for every function. I mean, that's what I did here. You know, that can, that might be a little bit of overkill. Maybe I would have a, maybe I'd have one file for like, I'd call it set colors. And then I would have each of these functions inside the set colors tab. Maybe I'd do something like that. Um, you know, I'm not saying this is the best way to organize it. I just wanted to use something to demonstrate different ways of doing it. But yeah, this is pretty much how it works. Hopefully this was helpful. And again, adding the tabs is really straightforward. Just new tab, you can rename tabs. In fact, what's kind of nice is you can rename the Eno file. So right now, like see how it's called Tabitha. Let's just go ahead and rename this. We're going to rename it to uh, Tabadaba. All right, so I renamed it to Tabadaba. And now when I come in here, notice that the enclosing folder got changed. The name of the enclosing folder is now Tabadaba which is what I just named that first tab to. So, well, the best way to learn this stuff is to actually go do it. So, hey, go open up your Arduino IDE. This is going to take you all uh, two minutes. Use the blink sketch or something like that and open up a tab. Try it out, you know, put it into practice. It'll help stick in your head and become something useful that maybe you can do in the future. Thanks again to NextPCB for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link in the description and grab one of those limited time $1,050 off coupons. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this, please like the video, leave a comment if you have any questions. I love comments in the videos. And if you could subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Helps us bring you great content. Thanks again and have a great day.